with your hosts, Not Afraid, Mike Cab, you with the Welcome live to Hotheads on Cannabis, another Saturday, and uh, you heard the song, Don't Worry, We'll All Float On All Right, that's the way I'm feeling today, and uh, who, who, Mon- Modest Mouse Float On, was that? Yeah. Yeah, that was good. Yeah, pilfered from your Facebook page. <laughs> that's it, yeah, I posted on my Facebook page. Thanks for following me, Newman. <laughs> sure, Ken. <laughs> and uh, I am Mike Ken, as you know, in the studio, the, the, the one of the two Hotheads, the other Hothead, Heather Mack, is on a work-related trip, we miss her this week. And uh, in the studio right now, we got a full studio right now, but a special co-host. His name is, uh, actually before we'll say his name, he, he's got a new show coming up on KOPproductions.com we're very excited about. I also call him The Voice because he's got this very amazing <laughs> voice, which I don't have. We all have our talents. He's got his talents. His uh, new show is called The uh, Perceptions of a Madman. It's on KOPproductions.com. Good friend of mine. He's wearing his relief his relief gear right now. His Absolutely. name is Rich Fu. Hey, yo. They're definitely uh, loving the studio today. Good people in there. Good people. Yeah. Exciting. Another exciting week. Absolutely. Activism Absolutely. and politics. As usual, man. Every week on this show, you bring it. You yeah. bring it. And uh, a lot of what we're doing, too, you know, we've, we've had a lot of meetings lately among the staff and the mm. crew here with Heather and Carmelita and Newman. Everyone, a lot of people, my friends, think it's just my show, but no, those folks are actually in charge, especially Carmen and Heather, right, Newman? The women sure. tell us what to do, kind of. They do. <laughs> and, uh, we, you know, we're definitely expanding and, and moving in all sorts of directions with our activism. And a lot of times, when we, when we kind of veer off subject, where we're not just cannabis, I think some people don't quite get it. And I just want to make, you know, kind of let people know what we're about and what we're doing and uh, one of the things that we're doing is we're bringing other movements to cannabis and cannabis to them you know we want to make sure that if there's activism going whether it's on the left or the right that ending the drug war is one of the prime prime pieces of activism the platform the plank it doesn't have to be number one but it has to be in there it has to be near the top because all these other issues that we deal with it directly affects the drug war touches everything you know whether you're against the fed or you want to increase you know whether it's a left wing cause or a right wing or you know right wing or for the people you know i think a lot of these activism movements are really for the people and uh well, we're doing a lot of that today aren't we foo oh absolutely full circle man full circle you know and uh, especially the topics we're bringing up today um definitely bringing a new new uh area into this um you know, and exactly what you're saying, you know, a lot of people have a tendency to, to, to pick one thing and focus on that. And the given the fact that there's so many things that need to be changed, you know, with, with society, the way we look around. And, uh, you know, you've been doing an epic job, man. And I really think today's show will, uh, will bring a lot of uh, new things to the board that uh, many people appreciate. Yeah, I'm, I'm, looking ex- I'm looking forward to today, big time. Yes. I'm, yes. I'm doing something I never do. I'm actually t- in, imbibing alcohol beverages. I'm having a little sip, a little taste. I'm not, you know... Enjoying a frosty beverage. A taste. A taste. And uh, <laughs> why not? You know, we're celebrating today. There's, there's been a, uh, a lot of kind of infighting over the last couple of years. And I just want to let everyone know I'm not involved in any infighting. No feuds. I support everyone in the movement. Every show. Um, you know, every, every move. You know, every, every reform group. I, I'm working with them. Um, especially normal too. Normal is one of the organizations that I that I started with. You know, I'm 100% behind normal. I know I posted a blog post that some people were upset with, and a lot of people um, valued. They they appreciated it on both sides. So I just want to make sure people know I'm with normal. My can is with normal. Um, wh- what are we doing today on the show? Well, we're going to be bringing on uh, Brad White. Yeah, uh, that's going to be an interesting, interesting conversation. Um, and Radical Russ as well. Yeah. Um, and I can't wait to hear from him. Both of these guys are uh, totally different worlds, but yes. very similar in, yes. in the fact that I see them both as great uh, activist leaders. Uh, 
they they have their own spin on things, and uh, it's you know Brad is, seems I don't know Brad as well maybe as Russ n- n- either one of them I'm not super close to either of these guys but I've I've watched them from afar I've 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 followed their work I support what they're doing and I love how one is more conservative on the on on the liberty side. Yep. Uh, you know, conservative, and the other one is on the liberty side, but he's more liberal. And both of these guys are great leaders, and they're making a lot of news, and a lot of activism happens around these two gentlemen. So, well, you kind of uh, bring it into the thing where you know you have two different people that may have conflicting views or or whatnot, but on the other hand of it, you know, they're both following their heart to what they feel inside is what they need to do. You know, uh, well, I would at least hope so. Yeah, um, you know, I, I that's it too. Like we, so many times, you know. I'll have a guest on this show, and this is kind of what I'm talking about today. A lot of people will immediately say, they'll, they'll bring up their objection to that guest. I get phone calls. It's like, you shouldn't have this person on because of this. Yeah. And it's like, yeah. wait, wait, wait. What about this? What about these things you share in common? What about these, these things that are happening right now where, just like the song, float on, man, because things are getting better. We are winning this war, this this war of education, this war, this discussion. Ending the war on drugs is feasible. It is something that could happen next week. It's not, you know, it's no longer we have to wait a hundred years. Right. It's I here. know it's going to happen, especially for cannabis. Yep. You know, cannabis is it's the other drugs. It might take some more time to get some, you know, common sense in there. Yep. But uh, marijuana, man. It, it's happening, and it's going to happen this year in this election, 2012. We're very excited about it, and that's what we're going right now. We have uh, we in the studio, other folks in the studio. We got Garrett right now, Garrett yeah. Kirkland. Yep. He's a uh, a liberty activist. He's someone that's been in Occupy Boston. He's done a lot of work locally and the Fed. I, I always see him, you know, with the big megaphone for that. He's here. He's an activist. We also have my good friend. I met him. Uh, through a campaign, we actually both worked on that campaign. Um, John, John, uh, Cunningham, yep. John Cunningham, he ran for U.S. Congress against uh, Barney Frank as a Republican, supported legalization, um, and Frank did some work with Mass Can and Mass LPA, and he just won. You you won something big this week. What did what did well? It was a couple of weeks ago. What what happened recently, Frank? Real quickly. Yep. Um, on April twenty eighth, I was elected uh, delegate of the fifth district, uh, two to one. Delegate for what? Uh, Republican National Convention. Wow. Yep. And this is this was in the Phoenix. It's a big story yeah. because you guys, a group of liberty activists, the people, average people like us, no funding, never won uh, an office. Well, some 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 of them, you know, like Brad, the can, the guy we're gonna have on as a guest in a minute. Brad actually, you know, does serve. He is a you know he he serves politically in office. He's a school committee member. Some folks have been elected to office, but a lot of have have not. And you guys beat the party leaders. You, the, Kerry Healy, the lieutenant governor, Rit Romney's pick. She didn't get selected, but my friend Frank Capone <laughs> is selected to be the delegate from Massachusetts at the Republican National Convention. It's it's a huge thing. Thank you know I'm 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 very excited about this. So we're gonna be talking to Frank and Brad Wyatt's on the phone in a few minutes. We also have Ira Proctor here. Ira is a comedian. He's also a Liberty. I would say a liberty activist. Yes, I am. Thank you. And uh, you're someone that uh, participated in the Republican uh, state state uh, del- uh, yeah, state just, convention. The con- Did, yeah, the caucus. <laughs> yeah. Yep. So we're going to be talking about a lot of these issues, a lot of this uh, getting into what just happened, which I kind of gave away, but we're going to be talking on the phone with Brad Wyatt. <laughs> Yep. Frank Capone, Ira here. We're going to be talking to everyone in the studio. I'm taking your phone call, 617-606-4122. And later on at 420, we'll be talking to Russ Belleville about uh, his status with Normal, with uh, what he's doing. And a uh, very exciting show. We want your phone call, 617-606-412. If you're calling, get in the queue. Instant feedback, if at unregularradio.com. And uh, we're going to play some music, and we'll be back on the phone with Brad Wyatt. What are we going to hear for the music right now? Uh, local music from uh, McLovin's. Oh, yeah. The McLovin. On regularradio.com. Back live on Two Hot Hats on Cannabis. And uh, we just heard some music. And right now on the phone, we have a delegate elect to the Republican National Convention. Remain, remains to be seen if he will get the title delegate. But he is a liberty uh, activist. And he's an elected official, school committee member, 
and he's credited as being one of the main leaders with this, uh, what happened at the state convention, which we're going to get into. Brad Wyatt's on the phone. Hello, Brad. Hey, how you guys doing this afternoon? Great. How you doing? Doing wonderful, wonderful. Excellent. So, uh, you, you've gotten some news coverage both in the Phoenix and uh, I think the Worcester Telegram and a lot of other newspapers and nationally even on like Fox News where they're, they're reporting what just happened at the state convention. Can you tell us quickly what has happened and, and give, bring us up to date so the folks out there that are regular listeners of, the, of this show that aren't aware kind of get an idea of what's, what's going on here at the state convention? For sure. Uh, let, let me give you a little background. Every four years in Massachusetts, we hold an election, a presidential primary, and after the presidential primary is held, delegates become bound for whoever does well in the presidential primary. In this case, because it was Mitt Romney's home state, uh, Mitt Romney did really well, and so delegates are bound for Mitt Romney. Now, what does that really mean? Well, in Massachusetts, 41 delegates are sent down to the Republican National Convention this year in Tampa in late August. And that sounds great. And so then the next question is, who are these 41 people? Well, the state party sets up some rules to determine how you elect these people. And it just so happens that 27 of these people, three per each of the nine congressional districts, are decided at a caucus that is about a month and a half after the primary. Now, most people didn't even know they had a caucus in Massachusetts. I certainly didn't until about four or five years ago. And so the way a caucus works is they have a caucus, and you show up that Saturday morning, you, you check in, you listen to some speeches, and then you vote for three delegates, and then you vote for three alternates to represent our state down in Tampa. And you do more than actually just go down there and vote for Mitt Romney, in this case. You go down there, and you're also going to sort of vote for the vice president, which is sort of important. You're also going to be working on the Republican national platform, which I know a lot of people say, well, a lot of people ignore the platform. That may be, but it's sort of a guidebook as Republicans, when they run for office, take a look at it, and they figure out how they set in. The other thing that happens is that those platform meetings, they have a discussion. And so you can bring up issues. And in particular, our group wants to try to bring up two major issues, and people are more than welcome to bring up other issues as well. And the two major issues we really want to try to focus on that we really think are hurting the country is audit the feds and these perpetual wars. And so what we'd like is to try to make a platform plank that, you know, people running for government should be in favor, as Republicans, should be in favor of auditing the Federal Reserve, and that they should be in favor of uh, funding wars that we only declare war. So we have a mission, we go in, we win, we get out. So those are, that's sort of the background on how things sort of worked. That's great. You know, and that's the thing. Is there's so much networking that goes on at the Republican National Convention. There's so much that happens. The platform. I, I just want to ask and make it known. A lot of us here want to see a third one added. We want to see end the drug war. I, I agree on the yes. first two. You can audit Very the Fed. So. I have major issues with the way the Federal Reserve and the monetary. That is like the most important issue. Uh, perpetual wars and the drug war. I think those three are just so, they're all the same issue, basically. It's all the system. It's, it's, this is the way the system works. So I, I, I'm, I'm so ha happy to hear that you guys are pushing that. That's, that's it's so exciting, Brad. Yeah, and, and I'll tell you, you know, ending the drug war is very important. It, it's, it's critical, actually, because it, it's hurting our country more than it's helping. There's so many unintended consequences. But when we go down there, you know, the media is going to try and take a look at one or two things. And I just thought if we threw that out there as the top one or two, it would sort of just brand us in the wrong perspective. So, oh, I know. And by I, the way, I'd also like to point out in Rhode Island, a, a, a Liberty delegate is on the platform committee already. So it's not just us. A lot of people are going down there from all around the country. I heard in Maine the L.L. Bean heiress, who's a, a supporter of liberty, is going to be on the platform committee as well. So hopefully people from around the country come together and they actually go back and say, let's take a look at this Constitution and ask where it says we should have a war on drugs and ask where it says we should have a Department of Education. I mean, they shouldn't be telling us how to teach our kids from 3,000 miles away. Same thing with the drugs. They shouldn't be regulating that stuff from 3,000 miles away. Yeah, definitely. Here. Yeah, and uh, we also have Frank Capone in the in the studio. You know Frank, don't you? Oh, absolutely. I met him four years ago. Great guy. Hey, yeah. Brad. So, what um, what is like? Uh, there's a lot of uh, discussion online. There's a red. What, what's that? Red website? mask group. Red mask group. A lot of these uh, local conservative websites. There's a lot of discussion about what's going on with the state Republican um, Party. 
and in how they've run this and how they seem to be wanting to push you guys out. Whether they're going to actually certify you. You guys won by the popular vote at these caucuses, at these um, nine caucuses that happened. There were 27 delegates. How many did the Liberty Liberty cause win? How, how many delegates? We got uh, 16 delegates, and there's still four within the margin of error with okay. provisional ballots. Okay. So there's a potential we could pick up 20. some more if we uh, follow the instructions and the rules and, and account the provisional ballots. But that does get into the problem of provisional ballots. Yeah, because that, that's the issue here. The, 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 from my understanding, from talking to the different folks in, in this community and, and that are involved in it, and in reading those posts on uh, Red Mass Group, they're not uh, counting ballots provisional ballots in some places they're uh trying to get rid of you guys it looks like i mean that you don't know if you're actually going to tampa you won but you last year it seems like they sort of last time around it seems like they certified everyone what is happening what's the status what are you waiting to find out what are they what are they looking into what's the issue here why aren't you a delegate right now well i'll tell you one of the big issues is that mitt romney is the nominee and this is his home state and they're very concerned that we somehow might embarrass the delegation down there. And I think the fear has gotten the best of them. When we're not going down there to embarrass them, we're going down to promote our principles in a respectful way. And so I think that fear has the uh, better side of them. And so now that they're fearful, they're trying to manipulate the rules to find any loophole to try to, to keep us from going down there. And that's actually See, the worst thing they can do. Like, if, if they're fearful, like... They're giving into the fear, and it's going to hurt them because if they just let you guys go down there, I don't get it. Like I know you, you when you, you go to this uh, convention, you're going to vote for Mitt Romney, aren't you? In the first round, yeah, we're required to by state law. So, so th- like they need to move on. I mean, do you think that there will be a second round? Like, are you guys working nationally to make that happen? I don't think so, right? You know, at this stage, you know, it's hard for me to speculate, but I would say that with two candidates, one person will get 51% on the first ballot, and that will be Mitt Romney. Uh, you never know what happens, but I'm going down there with the full intention that it's low expectations that Mitt Romney will be our nominee. That's great. You know, I mean, um, it's just like they, they need to... Uh they need to let up on this. I mean, I, I want to. I almost want to join this party, this local Republican GOP party. I'm unenrolled right now, and it's like when I saw this happen, I was like, "Wow, wow!" And now that if you guys don't go down, if they, you guys don't get it, I'm not joining. You know, it's like, do they want us to be part of this local Republican party or not? Do they want a Republican party? I mean, it seems like every year they're going down in numbers, except you guys are going up. Well, that's the thing. You know, there's only 11%. 11% of the state is Republican, you know? And um, if they don't send us, that's even more reason to join the Republican Party because what they're doing is they're only hurting themselves. They're not hurting us. They're only emboldening our cause and showing the fact that they're willing to break their own rules as they see fit and that they're actually people with principles and people, uh, you know, who, who care about this country. They're people who care about their power and their control and getting their people that they like in. And so they're going to destroy themselves. And then what's going to be left are the Liberty people who know how to work hard, who know how to organize and know how to make things happen. So, I mean, if, if, we, if we lose, this is the final push that we need in order to take over the state party. Yeah. I mean, that's, you, they're almost giving you what you want in a way. Because you guys yeah, I, I, I've got to say one thing, though. I've, I've got to jump in. Yep. You know, the mass GOP is not a bad group of people. Yep. You know, a lot of them have some of, the, some of the same goals and principles, and they're pushing for the same things that we want. I think it's a select group of people within the mass GOP that have attained positions of power that are trying to use their positions of power to strangle any dissent. And I, I just want to make sure it's clear that all Republicans aren't evil. Absolutely. Even a lot of the Republicans on the state committee and the Republican leaders in the state and a lot of the elected Republican officials, I've had at least a dozen come up to me and say, I want nothing to do with the, the crap that's going on with the state party and you guys. I support you guys. Yeah, and you're, you're right. And you're, you're wrong. Yeah, and you're, so re- you're, it's really you're, a select group of people within the party at the high levels that are trying to put the squeeze on us. Yep. Another, I, another thing we need in the state, too, is, is you know... Um, you know, somebody to help us with the gun control in the state as well. Uh, Massachusetts is probably the worst state for firearms. I know it probably doesn't relate to this, but, you know, uh, we are so far behind that people are, are not even getting licensed because they can't even own what the rest of the country can. So that's another thing we need help on, and we never have had, had help with that. So that would be something that I'd be interested in, I'll tell you that much. Absolutely. 
Absolutely. You know what's nice about the gun issue is at the state level we can actually try to make a difference. We can go to the ballot box. We can try to elect some state reps, try to give it more than a one-party state so we can actually have some real discussion on, on Beacon yes. Hill instead of just the lobbyists getting what they want. And so that's what's great about having the federal government out of the picture so that the states can come in and, and regulate. Yeah. Or uh, deregulate, deregulate is what we're looking for. Yeah. Well, in a case like that, yes. And, and I think it's important to know, Brad, uh, from what you said earlier, you are an elected official, a school committee member. That you, you are a member of the Republican Party. You're a big Republican supporter. You are. I, I think you should be the future party leader. That's what I'm saying. Like, here, here. like you should be the guy that is in charge of the Republican Party in Massachusetts. Well, you know, if, if they keep going the way they're going, that could possibly happen. I mean, there are a lot of people upset that votes aren't going to be counted. I mean, there's a sign that says, uh, you know, in 1923, I think Stalin said something to the effect that it doesn't matter who wins the election, it matters which party counts the votes. And that's exactly what's going on here. It doesn't matter how many people showed up, gave a couple hours of their life on a, on a Saturday morning, drove an hour to get there, and voted, because the party's going to put who they want in anyway. Yeah. And, and that can't happen. This is America. This is a democracy at that level. And we cannot allow that to happen. And we're getting a lot of good feedback from Republican town committees, from state committees, from elected officials. And hopefully those people at the higher ranks of the Republican Party in the state will listen to them and, and have the voice of reason and say, you know what, we should work with these liberty people instead of just be afraid of them and work against them. Yep. And right now, what can people do? Is there anything that people can do to help help you out in terms of getting getting to become a delegate at this convention? I, I'm not really sure at this stage. You know, right now we're 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 trying to convince the uh, general counsel to allow provisional ballots. We're trying to convince the allocation committee to uh, not kick out delegates based upon a crazy technicality in District Five. And the other thing they did was they sent an affidavit over to us to sign that we would vote for Mitt Romney. And I think we got it on Tuesday, and it was due back the following Tuesday and had to be notarized. And, uh, mm. you know, it's Memorial Day weekend. There's yeah. a lot of stuff going on. And, you know, that seems like a very heavy-handed tactic. There's no problem with us having a discussion, you know, and that's what really should happen. But instead they just sort of, you know, throw out what they want and demand it and... Hopefully they'll change. And I don't know what we can do other than register Republican, get in your Republican town committees, and get ready for the next battle. Dr. Paul has always said that elections are short-term, revolutions are long-term. That's it. And, and we can do this over the long term. You know, four years ago, you know, we, Frank and I met a lot of other people, and look at where we've, we are now. We've come a long way. Oh, yeah. I, four years from now, it's going to be even better. Yeah, just wait. It just gets... Yeah. Um, like, right now is... When you when you uh, have all of these different things that you're working on you, with uh, different folks. Where can people get hooked up with you guys to, to, to know what's going on if they want to be involved in whatever you're doing next? Is there certain places people can look, certain websites? Where, where do you guys organize? Yeah, um, there's a website called uh, Daily Paul that people use, uh, so dailypaul.com. There's a website I made called the libertyclubhouse.org, and there's an email sign up on that. And uh, there's actually going to be a website that's probably going to be going live in about two days that will describe the whole process that we've been through, and that will keep people up to date on this cycle. All right. So libertyclubhouse.org is probably the best place to go to to uh, sign up for email updates. Oh, I'll definitely sign up for that. I'm, I'm all over it. And you, you, uh, you're also a business, business owner, and you own a building down there in Worcester that does a lot of activism. I believe Scott Brown's headquarters are down there too, aren't they, in Worcester? Yes, they are. Um, you know that building? Um, my dad started a company in there in 64, and uh, then he bought half the building in 1973. And we made diamond blades, and we sold them all over the world, and we bought diamonds and steel, and it, we employed 119 people, and it was wonderful. And then in 2005, I got a letter from my steel supplier in China saying I couldn't pay in dollars anymore. I had to pay in euros. And that's what really shook me up and woke me up. And that's when I found Dr. Paul and Austrian economics. And so I really came at this from an economic freedom. But then I realized that you also need the civil liberty freedom. And actually, we just need to go back to the Constitution, and America will find itself very prosperous. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much today for uh, spending time with us and, and letting us know what's up, what's up on this uh, local and national story. It's definitely Absolutely. Big Thanks for having me on. I appreciate it. All right. And, uh, Have a great day. You too, Brad. Bye-bye. We'll, we'll, we'll talk to you later. later, Brad. And uh, dailypaul.com, libertyclubhouse.org, is uh, where you can 
find more information on what's going on locally. Ron Paul, what do you, uh, Rich Fu? Let's let's Rich Fu. Let's get into it. What do you <laughs> What do you think about the uh, the whole movement here? Uh, like you, you you come at it from a different angle, don't you? Oh, a much different angle. You know, my angle is you know um, we can have any type of government that has existed. You can even have uh, you know a communist government. That could actually work, but the problem is you have to rid the people of ego and greed, of these these false things they create for themselves or for for uh, you know a general purpose of, of superiority, you know. And, and the way I look at it is, regardless of what changes you make in a government, if you have a society that is fueled upon this kind of you know inner self, then the changes you make above are never going to carry down below either way you cut it. And the way I see it is, the people themselves need to have an evolution along with their revolution. All right. And, and what do you think about Brad Wyatt today? Brad Wyatt definitely spoke good. Um, you know, and, and you know how I'm weary of, of Republican parties. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no, but what did you think about him, though? I, in term, you liked that. I, I, I am that. interested. I am interested. Yeah. You know, and as, you know, um, I do with anything, you know, take the, the, the words of wisdom he did offer and, and see where I can take it from there and, you know, keep up and, you know, follow along, basically, and just see where it goes. Yeah. And, it, you know, interviews are tough, too, when you're doing yeah. something like this today. Yeah. It's tough to explain. I hope people followed along and understood what we're, we're getting into because I really think uh, it's important. You it guys is. are doing yeoman's work. What do you call it, Frank? Yeoman's? Yeah, is that a I good term? I don't know even know what that means. <laughs> it's, a, it's, a, it's just you guys are really doing some work. Well, you know, making what, things happen. Kind of, yeah, well, which, we, you know, we've been making things happen. You know, whether it's defeating um, draconian pandemic bills here in Massachusetts, or smashing Republicans. Um, you know, we're all Republicans, though. I shouldn't say smashing Republicans. Um, winning elections, um, you know, here in Massachusetts by changing hearts and minds. Yes. Um, and that's really what's important. You know, because at the end of the day, Republican, Democrat, it doesn't make any difference. We all have to share this earth together. You know, and we all need to be reasonable with one another and understand that the way that we're living is wrong, you know, Mm -hmm. and the course that we're on is wrong and that neither a Democrat nor a Republican really supports real change or real solutions. And the people don't yet either. I think that's the real problem. Yes. Well, people want to shop, man. People yeah. want the new Jordans that are coming yeah. out. We had they a don't want to face last reality. Night, you know? That's exactly And it. all the media and everything conditions them not to. Well, I mean, uh, even us activists. Yeah. I mean, Christ, it's, you know, it's easy to say I'm against Bank of America, but dude, what do you got in your pocket? You know what I mean? Right. Like, I what do you got I, on you? Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? It's like, it's like so many folks, you know, they, that's the problem with the Occupy movement, ain't it? I mean... Like, no matter if you want to face that reality or not, the media painted it that way. Mm-hmm. And That's I think the way, people- it, in the beginning, it, they painted it a nice way. It was good. They were getting the positive. They were getting, that Occupy movement really had a lot going on. They did. And, and it, it really devolved. It, it's strange how it happens, you know. It, the, and, and it was, that was kind of one of the reasons. It's like, how can you, this world today, we're all, even the activists, well, How can you avoid it? I mean, you can become a sovereign citizen. You can have no credit. You can just use cash. But even when you're using cash, what are you going to do, barter? <laughs> and then, you, now you're suspect for using cash, by yeah. the way. Yeah. You know, and the fact is we've all become a commodity. Yep. Human know, capital. You, and that's what it is, is every time you look around, you're getting a ticket for this. You know, uh, for example, the town of Fitchburg oh. now um, cut out all their contractors for towing because one company turned around and said, listen, We'll give you guys like a hundred bucks for every tow that we do that you give us. So now they're going to be go out trying to look for people to mess with. Now oh, I think they do that in Cambridge right now. I think you, you they have like, saying? and they don't even yeah. have a, they don't even have a, uh, a, a, a monopoly. That makes they have you like, a they, they have a monopoly for like two or three companies in Cambridge. <laughs> you, you know, like when you, make when you get money. towed, you got to call either Phil's or right. uh, I forgot right. the other one, but there's like two or three of them. Yep. So basically what happened is a bunch of workers end up losing their right. jobs. People lose their companies so the city can make a few make more, more dollars. Make more money. Oh, believe me, and I'm dealing disgusting. with tickets all the time. I, I deliver yep. things in the city. Yep. Um, 617-606-4122 is our phone number. We've been getting into a lot today oh, yeah. already. And, uh, well, you got me into politics, man. You know what happens when you get me into politics. <laughs> that, that can go south real quick. You cool, know what we got to do? Well, the next time, Republican State Convention, Democratic State Convention, which is today, um, I'm very interested to see what happens yep. to Marissa. If, Marisa, 
if Marisa gets on the ballot, I don't think she's going to. Oh, I they're having it, the Democratic caucuses today? Yeah. Nice. The state convention. To dis- it's um, it's uh, Elizabeth Warren is running for Senate, and she's having some issues because she's 132nd Indian or not. <laughs> you mean she's having issues because she supports the bombing of babies in Pakistan? Does she too? Yeah, it? absolutely. She's not having problems about that. Oh, no one, see, well, she see, should be. see, that's the thing. People, <laughs> people don't care about that, Frank. No, they you, care that she lied that she was an Indian. Oh, yo, 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 yo. Hey, She's hey, not, hey, and hey. the Indians are coming out saying like, we don't like this. She's not an yeah, Indian. Right, the right. Indians are saying that. They're you like, know hey, could you kind of downplay the, the whole uh, the Native Cherokee. American thing with us? We'd rather not have any association, you know. Yeah, but then, then, uh, then. Uh, the, this uh, lady Marisa is running, Marisa. and she's trying to get on the ballot. She needs fifteen percent today at the state convention yeah. to get on the ballot to run against Liz Elizabeth Warren on the primary. And I, I don't think she's going to get it. And she should, because you know this whole Indian thing, man. Wow, it's well, really I got to be honest. If you ask my opinion, we need a lot more Native Americans, and I mean true Native Americans, you know, up there as leaders these days. I think they need to start reclaiming. You know what they've lost because let's be honest here if we back ages ago adopted some of their ways of living along with ours and we did find that way of harmony you wouldn't see these banks robbing us right mm-hmm. now you wouldn't see people right now waiting to get that next iphone 4s mm-hmm. you know you would not see that and you could do it in some very simple ways too it is it, like it, if you look at uh, like like monetary systems yep, yep. Nobody would be, be asking done. you to go go move to a TP. That could be done. We don't need you know, to have. You know, that's not uh, the way it is. We don't have need to have central control bankers making mm-hmm. billions skimming off the top. Yep. Um, with with this kind of currency, we we could do it another way. There there are we ways to, to do it. Yeah. We, we need to look at nature's model and see how nature replenishes itself. That's it. We need to follow that scale model and understand that if nature has been doing this for billions of years copy it then you know what maybe it fucking works excuse my language but you know what that's the ways we need to adopt i don't like the word nature though we'll do good well it's not just well you could call it the laws of above and below if you will all right it's right and wrong it's right and wrong it's It's the way of the world it's It's the way of this good versus evil realm yeah you know it's it's do you want to rape the earth Yep. You know, and make arguments to say, like Ann Coulter, you know, the the Bible says that we can rape the earth for all it's worth, you know. Yeah, it's or, ours. Or, we can do whatever we want. Exactly, which is yeah, complete yeah. and total bullshit. Absolutely. Because what the reality is, is that we have a finite amount of resources in this world, and we have a we have a, a growing population, and we need to find how to live within our means. I mean, I'm not talking Georgia Guidestones live within our means, but I mean live within our means to the point where you know we're we're taking care of one another, and we're thinking about the earth because this is our this is yeah. our earth. And the, the earth fu- is and, not and here for us. We are and here the future for the people. Earth. Dig it. And the Let's people see. of the future. Uh-huh. You know, and our kids. And, you know, because bottom line is, like, you look at the nuclear stuff. That's yep. fucking scary. It is. It's absolutely scary. I mean, scary. this, it's they're insane. basically, what people don't realize is they're basically making per- certain parts of this planet uninhabitable forever. For thousands right. upon forever. thousands of years. You know, it might as well be forever. Because once it gets to be so large of an area, we're dead. All of us are dead. And it'll be just a rock. It'll be yeah. a radiated rock. Ira, you're here. You you don't have headphones on. You need to well, get headphones I, on. I can hear what the hell I, you're saying. Uh, yeah, I know, but I it's well. It's, you, I, we want to you, we you know just... if you can hear yourself. Oh, That's, all right, I can gotta, hear myself. Yeah. So, we um, basically, what do you think about all, all, all of what's gone down today? Uh, I love it. I love the guests you had. Uh, I, I love your loose environment you have in here. Yeah. I think I didn't have a beer before I came in because I didn't want to look like a fucking maniac. <laughs> well, I'm looking but, like it today. I don't no, know. but you guys are just saying about the planet and stuff. Yeah, I, you know, you watch Fox News and they drag out this family, the Duggars, and they're celebrating them because they had 20 kids. Yes. What yeah. are you shitting me? Yeah. <laughs> they should be, ta- right. and they're getting a tax break for every kid. You should, after your first kid, you should be taxed extra. Well, yeah. well it come, what, it come, what it comes down to yeah, is you know what? why you know, do they feel the need to have these 20 kids? Right. What is that personal need but that they need it? to yeah. Oh, I love that. Like you know, that. it's so like the, the one China, you know how they have the one China policy? That's a little extreme. But, you know, like, right, right, why are you taxing it. me for cigarettes? You should want me dead. Like, hey. you like... Tax for extra kids. I yeah, love that. You, you like I, two make one, that pairs down the population. Yeah, why but are we giving start? tax breaks for kids? Right, like, and giving money for kids. Like right, do I'm the not, opposite. I, I, I'm not away. sending anybody to school. Yeah, we're not. Why we're not, not vaccinating you. We're not vaccinating right. you. Yeah, we're not well, putting you in jail. We just we want more money for your kids. Well, why doing, are the liberals going for that one? 
That what we're asking people to do, basically, is the idea here, again, of the human evolution, of being able to think, you know, 360 terms. Hey, you know what? I'd like to have five kids because that's my personal You can need, afford it. But, but, look around. Yeah. Is this world doing well with I don't what care. we have right now? So, yeah. therefore, you know what? Maybe I should hold back a little bit. Yeah. And, you and, know and, what I mean? And, and, and I don't and care if someone who's worked their whole life and has a billion dollars has 20 kids. Right. That's great. I hope, like, you know... I hope they have a hundred because those hundred people are hooked up. They got a billionaire for a father and parents. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> pay their but, share. But you know, otherwise you can't afford it. Degree. Don't pay. Don't do it. Right. So that's 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 isn't that dealing with the laws of the world? Just like Rich just well, said. Rich said it. I mean, if you can't afford it. Don't do it. Why should we all have to pay? It's for not your so much kids? you know afford physically too, but mentally. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because you know, uh, keep in mind too. You know, a child's growing mind. If you have twenty kids a year apart. You have 20 kids at different stages, and you're trying to deal with the psychology of each one as a parent. So what is the chances that you're going to be able to stick with each one to do the job right? You're going to have to rely on each kid helping the other kid helping the other kid. And you're going to need now, a staff of people. <laughs> yeah, 20 yeah, kids it, is a big it, classroom. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm not a family. You're going to need, yeah, you're gonna need a staff of people, and you need money for that. So My feeling is the personal need does not outweigh the actual, you know, what it ends up being in the end. Yeah. You know, I just don't feel it's, it's the best proper thing. You know, all around. But, you know, there again, too, you know, if you're going to do it, take care of the damn things. You know what I mean? So, Ira, what uh, what did you, you went you went to the Republican. Yeah, it's state part of the, I, I was going to run as a delegate, but then when I heard you got to pay your own expenses, I said, hey, do you guys have anybody <laughs> else that wants to do this? <laughs> so, right. instead, I went and filmed it. And it's just disturbing. I mean, you know, some of the, the votes are, you know. Two or three votes apart, and there's nine provisional ballots, but we don't want to open them up because they know who they're for. So they don't want to. Who look are they at for? Them. Well, they're for Ron Paul. It's it, it, for Ron Paul delegates. You yeah. know, the guys that want to go down there and support the Liberty Slate. And like the guy was saying, you know, they, he's, they're going to have to go down. They're going to have to vote for Mitt Romney. So why are you disenfranchising all these voters? But everybody that shows up and they say, nah, screw you. We're going to do our own thing and we're not going to play by our own rules. And we're just, playing hardball. And they can do that. Hardball for no reason. Yeah, I know. You know, I know. Just to that's make the themselves issue. look like idiots. I know. That's that's the issue. Well, that's the game, though. Right. You know. Right. Yeah. It's it's all about. I want to go down. I don't want you to go down. I want to go down. And the truth it. is, if you had a true message, absolute positive, that you felt from the heart, and you felt, you know, hey, I'm going to get started in this and get it done. Guess right. what? You're not going to get it done. You got the compromise. You're going to meet somebody that says, I'm going to help you get it done, but you can't do this. You can't do that because you got to do this, this, that, opposite from me. And that's where the politics comes into right. play. Because even when you do have somebody true at heart, right. they end up having to play that game just to get ahead. Well, you see it. You see it going on with these delegates that they go and yep. they play by the rules and they don't try to screw anything. You know, they're just playing by the rules mm -hmm. that are set forward, <laughs> and they get screwed because yep. just ah, we're gonna. And they're very reasonable. I mean, yep. I, I found Brad to be very gentlemanly and reasonable and supportive of the Republican Party. He's part of the Republican Party. It's not like he's like some outlander. It's not like right. he's a Democrat. Or it's not like he's a Republican trying to infiltrate the Democrat Party. No, he's a Republican. And let's remember what, Why can't too. we send a Republican down to the Republican convention? What is the problem with that? <laughs> the problem, Frank, you are now a Republican, right? I am a Republican. I am registered Republican. I've, uh, the first time I registered to vote um, was, was four years ago uh, when I heard about Ron Paul. And I got involved in the process and I became an alternate delegate. And went to Minneapolis to the last convention, and um, I I saw what it really means to be part of a party, not just a Republican Party or a part of the Democratic Party, um, but just a party in general. Because what it comes down to is that these these um, conventions are coronations. You know, it's not like back in the old days where these be four guys in contention, and then you know it would be whoever had the best organization, whoever did the best job, came out on top. You know, it's not like that anymore now. It's decided beforehand, and there's certain players that are at the top that make the decisions. And everyone else who um, has any sort of standing in the party falls in line behind these people. And that can be changed, too. I mean, let's, it let's be realistic can. is that, you know, the Republican Party has made many morphing changes, you know, throughout the years to where, like... Um, you know, I believe Franklin Delano Roosevelt um, was a Republican. He did some great things. Now, I can't say I would agree with every single thing he did. But overall, you know, what he did create was some progress for the nation. And there were many more back then that, you know, again, I can't agree with everything, but they did do some phenomenal things to where, you know, even that kind of sh uh, overshadows what many of the Republicans are doing today. So many people that were once Republican, I think, are wanting to find that old 
Republican way of doing things again that was more fair to the people on the bottom. Right. Um, Before you know I mean? it was hijacked by the religious right. That's what exactly, happened. Exactly, exactly. The whole party was hijacked. And, Ira, you, you recently became a Republican. Is that right? Or were you a Republican um, no, before that? No, I've been a Republican for a while. Um, since probably, yeah, probably 10 years or 10 so. years, okay. And, um, you know, wasn't happy either way, though. You know, I was like a Democrat for a while, and I was like, I don't know what about this. And then a Republican, and I don't know about this. And then you find out about Libertarians and Ron Paul, and you go, I don't now this makes sense. Yeah, just let people do what they want to do. Yep, you know, and it's you know. It's so like you're a Ron Paul supporter. Yeah, um, all and uh, you're, who are you going to be voting for? Would you vote for Mitt Romney, or are you going to vote Gary Johnson, or none of the above, or Barack Obama? Who would you vote for, Ira? I right now. I think if you know being in Massachusetts, I mean, I I, I don't see that. It's going to make a difference, so I probably just wrote, vote Ron Paul and feel good about myself. Oh, write it in, out. even yeah. if he's not the. If, just, if just, he is the nominee, obviously you I'm vote. Going to vote for who I want for okay. once in my life, rather than against somebody. You're going to write you know? it in. Yeah, I that, like that vote. That's what you're supposed to do. I yeah. mean, that's the problem with this country. I know is that everyone you know was like, oh well, you know, I support Ron Paul, but he's never going to win. Yep. You know, and and if everyone who felt that. that way actually voted with their conscience oh, yeah. rather than voting for. Oh hey, I think you know this guy's gonna win, so I'm gonna vote for this guy. It's stupid. Yeah, it nothing's is. ever gonna change unless people are willing to put themselves out there, willing to take a chance, willing to get involved in the process. You so know? so often I vote that way. Like whether it's a write-in, I've voted for Mickey Mouse. Yeah, you know, <laughs> I voted none of the above. I voted for third-party candidates. I have no idea who they are because I will not vote for the sellouts. Well, I can't. You know, I myself. just won't. I but I want to vote. You got to vote. Like people say, don't vote. It doesn't matter. Bullshit. Yeah. If we had friggin', if we had more people like me voting, none of the above, and none of the above top these two clowns. You know, and how many races is it? Two clowns.